Hi, Jason. Hey, Roberto. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks. How are you? Doing well. Jason, how do I pronounce your surname? Sircone. Sircone. Okay, yes. great. Sorry, it's Italian heritage, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I always get mixed up with the sirs and the chers and the chers <laughs> in Italian. I, I, yeah, I mean, I'm sure at some point it was Circone or Circone, but yeah. My 43 years has been Sir Cone. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> really good to but, meet you. Thank you so you much too, for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Hello, Tailoring Talkers. It's your host, Roberto Rivilla, bespoke tailor and owner of Roberto Rivilla London Suit and Shirt Makers. We are going on a journey around the globe to meet a host of amazing human beings, creators, self-starters, performers, and more to learn about their journeys and the lessons they've learned. They share their top tips and life hacks to guide you on the path to success. Please support the show by subscribing, and it helps so much if you take a few seconds to rate and review. My guest today is a podcast branding strategist, author, and experienced podcaster. He helps coaches and consultants establish authority in their niche via strategic, impactful podcast guest appearances. He's also the voice of Evolution of Brand, a podcast featuring authentic stories and strategies from brand building professionals designed to help you grow your personal brand and succeed in your professional pursuits. Tailoring Talkers, please join me in welcoming Jason Saccone to the Tailoring Talk Show. Jason, how are you? Roberto, I am doing fantastic. Thank you so much for having me here today. Oh, you're welcome. So uh, we had some fun on the pre-talk. Um, we did. And, uh, and we're, we're going to rev this one up. This is going to be I'm high energy up, today. Buddy. Everybody get your notepads out. He, this guy is going to hit us with. So <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're not a podcaster. Um, what Jason is going to take us through today helps with anyone who is involved in building a business, growing a brand, um, and needs to get themselves out there. So let's get that one out of the way off the bat. Um, Jason, you are calling in from Pennsylvania. I am. Yes, which sir. for some for some reason I'll always associate with the office. Scranton, PA. You're Scranton, right. Scranton, Pennsylvania. Scranton's a real place, right? Scranton is a real place. Yeah, it's where I'm in. I'm in Pittsburgh. It's about oh gosh, four, five, six hours more to the east. Okay. Yeah. Over near I Philly. Love that sh- I love that show so much. Yeah, good. I, that's one of my favorites. I, it's funny though. I've had this conversation of that little grouping though. Like Parks and Recreation ended up being my favorite, and okay, there was so Brooklyn, I, Brooklyn I started, Nine Nine was mixed in there too. But yeah, yeah, Office is still great though. I started Parks and Rec, but then my my wife quite what wasn't quite getting into it. She's Spanish, so I I don't know if it's a translation thing, but hmm. she doesn't get a lot of comedy. Comedy's not you know big on her kind of watch agenda and it was really funny because you mentioned 99 there brooklyn 99 mm-hmm. and uh, i remember once i never bothered showing her that show but i remember i think it was last year or the year before um there was like an episode just showing on tv you know like they do at random mm-hmm. and she she was sat there and it was an episode where um where jake had to kind of guard the captain captain okay. holt uh, like you know he was being undercover or whatever and they were locked in this apartment and she was sitting in front of the television laughing her ass <laughs> off and i looked round at her and i was like but usually you'd say that stuff that he does is absolutely dumb and stupid like the lonely island and all that kind of thing right and and she was like this is really really funny and we ended up binge watching the entire series <laughs> from seasons one, I think it went through to season seven, right? Something like that, yeah. Something like that. And uh, and and we binge watched the whole thing in the space of about three months. Like she just <laughs> could not. We were doing like five or six of them a night. It was crazy. <laughs> so yeah, That's so nine, nine nine's got a special place in my heart. Um awesome. so um so Jason, the world of podcasting and podcast guesting and so on, it's really funny that you're here today. 
And I don't think you've got any particular special Jedi mind powers or anything, but literally, so guys and girls, I was telling Jason in our pre-talk that the last 48 hours, podcast episodes that have popped up in my feed, because I, I listen to podcasts, I have a voracious appetite for them because I'm always wanting to learn. And uh, several of the episodes have been about being a guest on podcasts and trying to make yourself available for that and that it's a really good method for getting your brand and your message out there um the at the same time i mean literally last night i received a message from uh, wade gall of the three-day weekend entrepreneur podcast he's an amazing guy he's my business coach uh, and a very good friend and wade was telling me that um, hey, Bobby, you need to uh, build a, a guest profile for yourself and on Podmatch and uh, you need to start guesting on shows because I think you'd be great on other people's podcasts and it will help to get your brand out there and so on. And I'm like, dude, I do not have time for that. In between doing my day job and running my business and actually the podcast and now we've got the YouTube channel that we just took the dust covers off a couple of weeks ago. Where the hell am I going to get time for that? But And then Jason pops up. <laughs> very kindly to be on the show today. And this is Jason's area. So Jason, over the course of the next 35 minutes or so, is going to take me from, like, I can't be bothered, I don't have time for it, to like, oh my God, like, how many shows can I be on, etc. Aren't you, Jason? Like, yes, why I should... am. We're driving it home. How, 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 why, where do we start? Well, I think, I mean, to speak to your point, Roberto, you're, you're talking about time. So you, you have to work within your time constraints and don't try to overwhelm yourself. So I recommend to anybody with this process, if you're starting fresh, start with one per week and get comfortable with the process and, and learn more about how to tell your story and make those connections, understand all of the value that that podcast guesting experience can deliver to you. And once you get comfortable with it, it's going to be a pretty seamless transition to start adding two, three, four, five interviews a week, sometimes even more. I mean, I, I usually shoot for about two to three a week for myself, but there will be some times where I have double that or even more than that. But for me, this is the ultimate way, not just to build my brand, but to live life because I'm getting this amazing opportunity to connect with somebody on the other side of the globe who. Under most circumstances, I probably would not have the opportunity to connect with. And we've already started cultivating this new relationship, and you never know where that can lead. I've already learned. You you know somebody that I know. You know Wade. Wade and I were both contributors to the Podmatch Guest Mastery book. That's how I officially got introduced to Wade and learned who he was. So this little podcasting community has so much power built within it. And if you really jump in with the right mindset and the right expectations, you can accomplish so much. But if you overwhelm yourself and you turn these opportunities to make connections into a chore, you're going to hate it and you're going to burn out fast and you're not going to bring your A game to the mic. And you're ultimately going to turn your attention elsewhere, probably way before you even came close to really making a breakthrough. So start yeah. small and build from there. Yeah. Yeah. How and let's just go back a little bit. And I'm so sorry, I did you a disservice because um our listeners don't know you yet. How did you <laughs> and you're right, the world of podcasting, oh my god, it is so small. Like mm -hmm. it is so small. Like people say to me, I started my podcast during the pandemic, as mm -hmm. a lot of people did, right? Because my business did, yes. closed, you know, I, I was trying to figure out another way that I could get into the ears of my clients because they didn't want to talk to me around that sort of time. Um, and also, I'd been a guest. <laughs> Here's the irony. Yeah. I'd been on a guest. I'd been a guest on a, on a few podcasts previously, and I kind of enjoyed it. And I was always kind of envious of what they were doing because I think it's such a great format. I mean, I yeah. I you know I love listening to podcasts. It's you know it's whether it's for entertainment or whether it's for education or whether it's i just i'm feeling a little bit down and low energy and i want to just kind of get some of my regular 
podcast shows and you know you get to know the host really well and you just want them to keep you company while you're walking the dogs or whatever I just I just kind of love that world and and now having been a podcaster for coming up to actually it's two years this month um I'm I'm really happy to be in that world, but I'm also happier being on this side of the microphone rather than your side of the mic right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's that's kind of like my journey into podcasting. How about you? What were you doing before all of this? And then what was your journey into the world of podcasting? I wish my entry into this world was a little bit smoother, but it is what it is. And I love telling this story. And I did radio back in college, absolutely loved it, and was thinking about pursuing it as a career, but it never panned out. So I did different things for 13 years until podcasting became something that I wanted to do. And my best friend and I had been kicking around ideas. What do we want to do? Let's do a podcast. What do we want to talk about? What are, what are we going to cover? What's going to keep us interested? Blah, 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 blah. I mean, that that was pretty much the extent of the planning. It was just some conversations in passing. and. What ended up happening was at the time I was doing some things in the craft beer space and I had launched a blog and also decided because I was making partnerships. And I mean, when I, I had a plan for monetization, but wasn't like at first it was all about just making connections in that world. And I wanted to have content for my readers. So I knew I needed to make some partnerships. So I was just calling up bars and new breweries and different businesses saying, listen, I'd love to write about you. I don't want any money. I just want to work with you. And that led to the relationships I needed. So I knew when monetization came along, I'd have some people to talk to. And what I decided to do was launch an app that would connect Pittsburgh to some of the events and some of the happenings and things that were happening in town all in one little place. And I got a lot of backers and and a good amount of people joined up with me. The day I launched that app, this guy came on Twitter and just started trolling the hell out of me. And this is terrible. If you're going to do this, you should be doing this and blah, blah, blah. And like, I had never experienced a troll. I don't even know if I was familiar with the term at that Mm. time. This is back in 2014. And I'm just sitting there going back and forth with this guy, completely wasting my time. And finally I said, what, who is this guy? What does he do? And I went and looked and it, His profile said he hosted a beer podcast and I knew it. That was it. I was like, (laughs) I called my friend and I said, guess what? I said, I've got our our idea. We're going to launch a beer podcast and we're going to do it better than that guy. Yeah. And my friends, yeah, my friend's a big (laughs) beer guy. And he said, absolutely, let's do it. So we did it out of spite, which is the worst way to start anything, (laughs) let alone a podcast. (laughs) And I already, I've only known you a short time and I know you're a lovely guy. Right. So, so, you know, it it, it was just, that guy must've been a real douche. He was pretty much. And I I never met the guy. I ended up meeting his co-host and we laughed about it. It was pretty funny. (laughs) And I mean, it's all water under the bridge at this point. And if I met the guy in person, I'd probably shake his hand and say, whatever, man, it's all old school. But Anyway, we we the legit of or the the extent of our planning after we landed on that idea was let's pick up some mics and a mixing board from Amazon and hey I've got a partner that they want it, I talked to them they said they'd love to have us host our first episode so we're doing our first episode in a noisy bar on trivia night, which made it even noisier. Yeah, and before we started recording, I said are we gonna talk about beer the whole time and my buddy goes no let's talk about sports too. So now we're not even targeted. We're talking about two different subjects. We have no format. We're just riffing. <laughs> we didn't edit. We threw it out on the internet and we had a podcast and we we stunk. We were terrible. <laughs> and what I look back on with that experience was uh, it brought me back in. I, I loved the audio world in college and obviously it had changed so much because again that that little studio that i went to in college now i'm able to do it at a bar or at my kitchen table or wherever i was but yeah it rekindled my passion for audio and we ran that show as far as we could and of course as we continued to push forward we got better and i mean i guess that was up for debate as well but we ran that show as far as we could met some great people and once we parted ways on that show i decided i wanted to do another podcast And about 20 some episodes in, I realized that I was really, really wanting to sink my teeth into podcasting, but I wanted to do better and I wanted to improve my own skill set. So I decided to stop doing that show and just study. I took a year and a half and I don't, I mean, you take as much time as you want. It just ended up being that period of time for myself where I just listened to other podcasts and 
listen to radio personalities, watch the news with an analytical cap, watching to see how they talk to the camera and how they communicate and told stories. And I wanted to try to adapt as much of those skills into my own. So when I came back to the microphone, I was more prepared and I had a little bit better understanding in how to tell that story through a microphone and have those communication skills that clearly it made me a better podcaster. I think it made me a better communicator overall. And then over the past few years, it just morphed into first, I helped one person launch a podcast, then I helped another and then another. And over the past year and a half, I've been putting my focus on the guesting side because like I like you, you let off with it, Roberto, you have to understand how much value is packed into this. And I try to bring that message to the world in every way possible, whether it's one-on-one or through the podcast, mic, just like this, the benefits you can experience as a value-driven podcast guest, if you do it right, could literally change the face of your brand and the face of the world. If you're doing things with a strategy and a plan. So that's my story. Wow. I feel like I've heard your story before, maybe on a podcast somewhere. Because Probably. when you were doing the Craft Beer podcast, mm-hmm. so you were obviously interviewing local, you know, pub owners, bars, all that kind of stuff. And you were you weren't only just producing a local podcast that was in that niche, but mm-hmm. you must have been doing such a great job of connecting not just yourself and your partner with all these little business owners but also yeah. starting to bring that community together and and then i i hope you're going to tell me that your podcast was then seen as the go-to source audio speaking for anyone that was was wanting to know about kind of craft beer and brewing and stuff in the pittsburgh area no oh, not that okay. not that first podcast now again it, it did develop an audience but it just never really peaked to that point. I mean, I think okay. in, in total, we only ended up with around 60 some episodes. Some of them were just me and my friend rip it, riffing back and forth. And we had others where we were reaching out to breweries and those, of course, those got more traction. And that's where I was looking at numbers, which it's not something I do a lot these days. But then when I was looking at the numbers way too much, which was a rookie mistake, I was saying, look, these ones where we're hitting, sitting down with breweries and, and other people are double. People want to listen to them, not us. Let's yeah. let's double down on that. So yeah. I think what ended up happening was when I came back after I had canceled that second podcast, did my studying, got my almost associate's degree, came back and started the next podcast. That was the one that had much more effectiveness. Okay. I was reaching out to more people in the community, but also outside of Pittsburgh, I was able to connect with Again, I, I mean, I was using Skype at the time, but I was able to connect with people around the world, around the country. I remember I, I had an interview, a great interview with a girl in Ireland who was from the States, but doing her master's degree, I believe, in Ireland. Mm-hmm. And we connected for a podcast because she was working over there in the space and in the States, she was doing the same. But that podcast was the one that started to elevate things a lot more. And I really came into my own as a host and it was a lot less shenanigans. Because that was really what the first podcast ended up being. A lot of shenanigans. And yeah, I just, like my first I looked, few episodes, uh, shenanigans is probably the right word uh, to way to describe them. Well, um, you think, I mean, you think about a beer podcast. I think there is some element of getting a pass because, you know, it's a beer podcast. Everybody's yeah. drinking. But what I learned <laughs> was the, the, I learned the biggest lesson from doing all of that. It's not about the recording experience that you as the producer and as the host are having. It's about the listener experience. If you're really going to captivate somebody, that has to be a good product. And what we were putting in front of them wasn't a good product. There, We did one. We There was this big beer. I'll tell this story real quick. There was this big beer event, and we got invited to do our podcast from the event. I the The guy that was putting it on, his brewery, and they were partnering up with one of the distilleries in town. And I knew them both. And they said, yeah, we'd love to have you. This will be so much fun. So people were coming over and talking with us. We were obliterated, obliterated. Before we turned the mics on, the whiskey rep from that company made me do three shots. And I had already been drinking for like an hour and a half. I introduced my name wrong on that show. I introduced myself as my co-host name. And we had a buddy come in <laughs> who also had a beer podcast and he was co-hosting with us. And he heard it and goes, what did you just call yourself? I didn't even catch it till I went to edit the next day. <laughs> Complete 
shit show. <laughs> and that again, when I was editing, I'm like, this is terrible. I wouldn't want to listen to this. Still put it out because I didn't know what else to do. And I'm thinking, well, we had fun. Maybe people be able to feel that. No, it's all about the experience that you're creating for your listener. It's all about the story you're telling. It's all about the engaging conversation that you're having. And where we messed up with that episode, there were like four different conversations taking place at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So from a pure audio <laughs> listening standpoint, that was a mess. So learned a ton and I'm able to apply all of those mistakes that I made back in the day to anybody I work with now. And again, on the guesting set, you can learn so much from those mistakes as well, because I can teach you exactly where we went wrong and flatten that learning curve and get you pointed in the right direction right out of the gates. Yeah, I'm really, really glad that we got into that. By the way, my original question was kind of loaded because I sort of already knew the answer. Um, yeah. But I wanted to just illustrate a point because some of our listeners and, you know, some of them are, are friends of mine as well or people that I'm in, you know, reasonably regular contact with. And, you know, they've kind of moved from, um, oh, you started a podcast. Oh, that's nice what's a podcast, right? And then they right. get it and then they listen to a few episodes and they're like, oh, hey, this is actually isn't bad. Um, so how's it going? How many download numbers are you getting? Um, you know, do, do you, you must have uh, trained for so long. Like, where did you find mm -hmm. time to go to school to learn how to present and so on and so forth? And like, I don't know. I just picked up a mic, you know, like yeah. you off of Amazon and just kind of got on with it. And I've been muddling my way through ever since. Um, mm. But the more you do it, the better you get. But yeah. people think there's this sort of, I don't know, this kind of theater of perfection, right? Oh, <laughs> man. You, de you decide to become a podcaster and it's like, bang, right there. And yeah. it's not. It's it's tough. And there's a lot of work that we do and that we put in. I mean, I was telling Wade that when I first started, my first, probably like my first 35 episodes. So by the time this goes out, we'll probably be around episode 90 or so. Um, but my, my first like 30, 35 episodes were like, I, they would take like an hour's episode could take me a whole weekend to edit because, you know, I was trying to fix ums and ahs and hesitations and where my guest might have had a little tick because they, you know, they weren't used to being a guest. And so they were even more nervous and it amplified things that they were doing. And so what I was trying to do even more than make myself sound good was to try and make my my guests sound great because mm -hmm. you know the purpose of my podcast is to number one provide value for my listeners in different areas of their lives and number two <laughs> I'm, I'm really glad that i said that as well because now a lot of you listening know what you come here for every week um and uh there's another lesson in there and number two it's to shine a light on my guests and the amazing mm -hmm. work that they do um, and then if there's some synergy or there's some desire from our audience to connect with our guests, then great. You start bringing people together. That's the reason why I do what I do. And that's what I do in my day job in real life as well. You know, I'm tailoring clothes all the time, but I'm also connecting people continuously. I mm. cannot remember where I'm going with this. This is a huge tangent. Um, but it's, you know, it's it's a lot of hard work. It's not perfect. We're stumbling all the time and we're we're learning from what we're doing. So thank you so much for sharing that because that um hopefully uh tells some people out there that it's uh it's a bumpy ride or it can be. But we're a great yeah. community and we're very supportive as well. So when yeah. when we swing that round to being a, a guest, um so where does I don't know if you can be generic with it. Well, you're the expert at this, so you'll tell me. But where does one start? So you're you you have a business, and you want to get yourself out there, and so you have the traditional methods: Google, pay for advertising. You know, I don't know if anyone really does print anymore, but whatever, cold mm. calling, all of that sort of stuff. But now suddenly we have all these great platforms like podcasting. Like, where do you begin? Well. I mean, if you're talking about incorporating all of those potential options, pick one. I mean, that's typically what I recommend because you don't want to overwhelm yourself. And you may want to do a little bit of toe dipping with all of those, like do some pay-per-click as it. you can learn a little bit about how those platforms work. But it's 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 really hard to get tangible results unless you go all in. And that's pretty much every platform out there, because if you're just putting minimal effort 
very minimal results. I, I think it's it's hard to ask for maximum results if you're just doing. You, you can't get a hundred percent if you're doing five on the yeah. front end. Yeah. So let's let's say you've picked podcast guesting. You've seen this as or let me eliminate this belief right out out of the gates too. And you you had alluded to this when you kicked off the show, Roberto. You don't have to have a podcast to leverage the podcast medium, and that's typically the belief. I want a podcasting. That sounds great. I'm going to start my own show. I need to have my own show. And what ends up happening is not a lot of time gets factored in. And that's where you can get crushed because podcasting is incredibly time consuming. When I talk to anybody or if I'm training somebody, if I'm getting them ready for this medium, I always teach the plight of the podcast creator because Anybody that really wants to get something from this platform needs to understand what a podcaster goes through to put that content out on a consistent basis. And any podcaster that is putting that type of quality, valuable content into world into the world on a consistent basis deserves a medal. Like You should be commended for what you're doing because it's not easy, especially when it's purely out of labor of love in most cases, because not many podcasts are monetized, at least in the mm -hmm. beginning. When you're launching that show and getting it ready, you're doing this because you have a belief in what you're building and you see this guest that could bring immense value to your show. So your audience tunes in, loves what they hear, comes back next week, starts binging your catalog, starts recommending it to others. That's the objective. And as a guest, you have to understand this is what the podcaster is looking to do. And they're putting a lot of TLC into making you look like a freaking all-star. So the least you can do is be respectful of their time, show up on time, be a valuable asset. Don't go into sales mode. Don't ruin the experience by trying to just sell, sell, sell. Mm -hmm. Tell some stories, bring value to the microphone. That's where it all starts. So when you're looking at this platform, you have to start with the respect of what Esther is looking to accomplish. Now, in doing that, they're going to respect what you want to accomplish as well. They know you're using their platform as a means to reach new people. And if that guest is doing it right, they're using it as a means to make a new connection with somebody so they can start to cultivate a relationship. This interview that we're recording right now, for me, is just one part of this. I saw your show, Roberto. I liked what you were doing. I had listened to a little content, decided this was a place where I'd like to come to. I want to I know Roberto. Maybe he knows some people I can connect with as well. Let's talk. Let's hang out. Let's see how this goes. And that's how a lot of relationships build and begin. Mm -hmm. And then you build from there. So you have to treat this whole experience just like that. And that's where the wins come. The, and the wins are in that pre-conversation you and I had and in what we'll do after we wrap up recording. This is all gravy. And this is what the audience gets to enjoy. And, and doing that, every person connected to this podcast in any form wins. They get something that they feel, that they, they they know whether it was just the connection for you and me or the listener. If they were engaged with this content, they can say, that was well-spent time. Whether I learned something, maybe I gained a new perspective, maybe I want to do podcast guesting as well. Maybe I'm going to reach out to Jason and say hello. Not, and that's, and that's no, not a sales pitch, just saying. like That could be what potentially comes from this because yeah. I know when I show up, I'm coming with value. And I'm coming to have a good time and have a great conversation. So it's establishing that mindset. That's a big part, the biggest part, other than knowing why you're doing it, which I think is, I want to say it's boilerplate. That should be the first thing you do whenever you're bringing a new initiative into your world. Why am I doing it? What do I want to accomplish? But once you establish that and you start treating this platform as the means to get you where you want to go, understanding all these ins and outs that are going to get you there faster. It's going to make all the difference. And that's why I always recommend having a conversation with somebody in the space. And that's where I'm, that's the role I play. And I'm always happy to have that conversation. So people do this right and actually experience some wins with it. Yeah. And there's, um, you know, I was also thinking as you were, you were speaking there about the things that guests do that they shouldn't. And I think it would be remiss of us if we didn't touch on that. Um, 
So, you know, my experience, I mean, this is probably where I can help people because God knows I've had guests that have done things that I've not been, let's say, very pleased about afterwards. Hmm. And it's, it's you, you know, you hit on it right there that we as podcast hosts put so much in to make our guests look like absolute rock stars. And then after that, not just because, you know, I described like one of my friends when I first started was like, what's it, what's, what's, you know, hosting a podcast like, and he thought I'd suddenly become a celebrity because in his world, podcasts are everything because he's so into yeah. them. I've got other people, clients, whatever that, that, you know, they still haven't caught on to podcasts and what the point of them is yet which actually goes to show that it's quite an immature medium still, incredibly, oh, yeah. despite yeah. the fact. I mean, when, you know, when did podcasts first appear? Like when we had iPods or something like 20 years ago? Early 2000s, I think 2006, I want to yeah. say. was when Adam Curry really founded the whole, or got the whole thing going. Actually, I'm going to go back further because there were people that were doing podcasts. I actually had the founder of Blueberry on my show. I believe he said he started in 2004 and there was maybe 20 or 30 people that yeah. were doing what he was doing and it was all yeah. internet based there was no ipod yet and you know where it's gone from there yeah exactly um yeah and then so so i was like well you know what i'm finding is that I, so i do the episode and then it takes me like 20 days to edit it um <laughs> that's an exaggeration but i mean near <laughs> enough and um uh and then i put it out there and then it, I, I kind of liken it to like, let's say you're a struggling actor and you you get a part in a play that's being shown in your local village or town and uh, you get the you know opening night. And so you get a load of flyers printed up at the local stationer and then you're running around to all your friends and family and everybody that you know, it's like, come to my show, come to my show, come to my show, come to my show, listen to my podcast, listen to my podcast, listen to my and then. And then on opening night, you're standing on the stage. And before you say your first lines, you're kind of squinting in the darkness yeah. beyond the stage lights to see who showed up. And mm -hmm. there might only be three people in the audience. Yeah. And then your soul kind of starts to get crushed. And, it, you know, the podcast equivalent is you go on to your podcast host and you look at your stats, your download numbers, yeah. and you might see that tw there were 12 downloads and you're like, oh, OK, not that many people listen to it. <laughs> But the the podcasters that ultimately become successful, the ones that just carry on despite that, um, right. and and they prom and and they promote the episode as much as they can to put that light onto their guests. Because again, that's the whole reason I've I've got you here. Um, but then, as a guest, the worst thing I think a guest can do is be on someone else's podcast. All that effort's gone in to putting the spotlight onto them, and then they do nothing. They do nothing. It happens so much. Yeah. You tell yeah. them the episode's gone out. You give them the links. You give yeah. them all the media and stuff so that they can take that content and they can use it to promote themselves however they want. Um, and then you start posting on social media and you post on LinkedIn and you post wherever you can to tell everybody about your wonderful guest. And then your guest does like diddly squat, zip, nada. Yeah. And you're like, oh, did I do something wrong? Did I offend them? Yeah. And it could be it was well in, you know, it wasn't ill intention that they're just busy and, you know, they, and, and then weeks go by and then months go by and then it's like, what's the point? Mm -hmm. But, <clears throat> you know, are you ever, if you be, if you do that, are you ever going to get invited back? <laughs> no. I, I wouldn't invite that person back. No. Exactly. You know, would you get yeah. invited on another show? Uh, if it's you know because again now we've just put it out there that the podcast community is actually quite small mm -hmm. um you prob you might not it it might damage your rep reputation so yeah. being a good guest is is a is is also integral yeah. to building and amplifying your brand yep right oh god yes and you know it's funny i want to jump back to what you were saying about friends saying about your podcast and, and and thinking about you know what it's become and then you're looking to see who's there what's funny about the whole i'll tell you the difference and you said like it's still sort of an immature platform and how we've got a long ways to go i'm thinking of the facebook experience when i posted that i had contributed a chapter to the pod match guest mastery book and i had a picture and everybody was oh my god that's so awesome congratulations i've got comments i've got people lying. i mean it's like one of my most engaged with posts that i've put up and like that i had put up in all of 2022 
And I was telling I was like, so my dad and I were talking about it and he had asked about the experience of doing it. I was like, yeah, I mean, it was a pretty seamless process. Yada, yada, yada. I said, you want to know what's funny? If I ever post links to my podcast, which is syndicated globally and gets listens in probably 30 some countries, I don't know the exact number and people listening here in the States, you know, a hand, like a few people will give me a thumbs up and it's nothing, but I contribute one chapter to a book. And everybody showed up to thank me for doing it and congratulating me. And so it's like, it's just this funny thing. I was like, I'm coming at you twice a week with fresh podcast content, but it's not viewed the same way. And maybe it's because the ink is permanent on a book. I don't know. I just, it is what it is. It's just one of those funny things that I laugh at. And like, you know, this podcast is out there for you all the time. (laughs) You didn't have to wait for me to contribute to a book. But now to speak to what you're saying about the guest. There's two ways to look at this. Now, I'm with you, Roberto. I agree 100%. If you do not share that content once it goes live, not only are you doing that podcaster a bit of a disservice because they've done all the heavy lifting for you to put that content together, but you're costing yourself another opportunity to showcase to your audience that you are truly the expert that they need. They turn to you because you're a resource and the more you tell, extol the virtues of what you do and they hear that, they know they made the right decision. And that's going to continue to build that brand advocacy to where they start referring others to you as well. So if you do nothing, it's, it's really just a missed opportunity. It makes me wonder why would you be a podcast guest in the first place? You're not going to utilize what happened in that conversation and with that final product and use it to your advantage. It's kind of a waste of time, right? Yeah. But now let me flip this back over to the podcast host, because this is something I don't think gets talked about enough. Podcast hosts will have that same complaint. Man, I I, I was so excited about this episode. I put it out. I thought they were going to be all over it. I gave them all these asses to share. I didn't hear a peep. And the first question I always ask is, when did communication stop happening between you and that guest? And more times than not, the answer is, well, we haven't really spoken since the interview took place. There's one of the big reasons why, because in that time span, and it could be anywhere from a few weeks to a few months, depending on how far ahead the podcaster is with their production schedule, that person has done other interviews, they've got other initiatives, they've got other things happening in their life. The day of your interview, it's a big priority for them. Three months down the line, it's not anywhere near. Not at all. They've probably forgotten. Sometimes they might say, oh, yeah, that's right. I was on that show. It's (laughs) up to you to keep the communication going. And there are a number of ways to do that. And it can be just as simple as learning where they spend the most time on a social media network and then go follow them and connect with them there. So you can continue to keep the conversation going. I'm saying you don't drop everything in your world to be this person's friend now. But if you're on LinkedIn a lot and they're on LinkedIn a lot, whenever you see them post, if it's something relevant that you can add value to, keep adding value to the conversation so they see your name. So it's not just this one-time transaction of an interview, but you have these relationship building tactics in place that will make that person just as equally as excited when you're in, when their interview does go live as they were the day you actually recorded it. So again, not about the interview. It's about the relationship that you build. Yeah. I, 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 anybody that I connect with, I always extend the offer to connect after the fact when we're not recording. 100%. I call it a meeting of minds. You can call it whatever you want. For me, it's more of an opportunity to get to know that person in speaking where there's not the need or, or the task of creating a podcast. Maybe we learn a little something about each other that sparks a potential business relationship. Maybe when they have more time to learn about what I do, they can recommend that service to somebody in their circle and vice versa. Again, the interview is the catalyst. This gets the relationship started. And when you take it that extra few steps, you'll start eliminating the podcast guest not sharing. Now, is it bulletproof? No, because there will still be some jerks out there that won't do it. But if you're doing your part to maintain a relationship along the way, you're going to flatten that so much and you're going to be much happier with it, not just because they shared it, but because you actually have a genuine relationship that you can 
used to, again, whether it's friendship, whether it's for business, whether it's a combination of both, it's going to serve you much better and make this process much more rewarding. Yeah. I find now that, um, you know, two years on or whatever it's been, the like two years ago, if if I was in the middle of a conversation, like a group conversation in a networking setting or something, and someone needed help with something that was outside of my specific world, which is clothing and tailoring, mm-hmm. you know, I'd, I'd kind of like just be sipping my drink and I'd just, you know, hope, like wait for that part of the conversation to end. Whereas now, like I can literally sort of cycle through my brain and it's whether it's, you know, through the physical networking that I do or through podcasting now, Mm -hmm. you know, like kind of cycle through my 85, 90, 100 episodes. And I'm like, do you know what? I know someone who'll be able to help you with that. Yep, exactly. And that's the magic. And this brings me on to, so, you know, so so, so, so what we're talking about is how you can use um, being a guest or podcast guesting to amplify your brand, to be seen as a thought leader in your space. And where the hosts can really come in handy, and I'm again, I'm just thinking back to some interviews I've had where I finished an interview, and then sometimes straight away, sometimes after a couple of hours, once I've had a, a chance for it all to marinate, I'll then email a bunch of other podcast hosts that I know and CC the person that was just a guest and say, hey, so, hey, Jason, hope you're well. I was just recording with so-and-so copied here. I think you guys would have a great synergy together. You're working in a space that they need some help with. They're doing some things that I think you'd be really interested in. It'd Mm -hmm. be great for you guys to get together. And I think that so-and-so should be a, should be a guest on your show. Yeah. And I, that happens a lot with us. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so that's where, you know, initially, because I, I, I wasn't even thinking from that point of view, because one question I was going to ask you is like, you know, how do you how do you decide how do you become a guest? Like, do you have to, you know, listen to shows and then write to the hosts? Or do you have to join a, a, a podcast matching platform? But and you'll probably give the answer to that in a second. Mm-hmm. You will give the answer to that in a second. Um, yes, sir. But one, once you've. <laughs> <laughs> Once you've got your foot in the door, if you do a really good job and you bring your A game to a podcast that you're asked to be a guest on or you're a guest on, mm-hmm. then the magic can start to happen. Because yep. then you, you know, if you leave a really good impression with a host, they'll do most of the work for you because most of us hosts that uh, have got some tenure under our belts now. Mm-hmm. have got so many i mean i know like right now you and i talking here i i mean to be honest we probably know all the same people but <laughs> um, but you know outside of the uh our little you know kind of pod match universe um you know i i, I know for sure there's going to be about half a dozen people that i would put you in touch and connect you with yeah. and so the story continues and that's yeah. how you start to amplify Am I right? Am I getting this? I feel because I'm your, I'm your, you're the teacher. I'm the student here. You're absolutely right. I mean, think about that person in your life who you hear from once a year. And when you hear from them and they send you that message, like, Hey, what's up? You know, damn well, the next text is, can I borrow your truck? I got to move some things or you've got a truck. Can you help me move this weekend? (laughs) They're always going to want something. (laughs) There's never that reach out of like, Hey man, I was just reading this article and it made me think of you. Check this out. And send them the link. Like those types of things are just what buddies do and what friends do. But if you're always that person that's asking for a favor, that that <laughs> that wears out real quick, and people catch on to that's what you do. That's it. So, and it wor- and it's like that in sales as well, right? You know, yeah. Uh, you know, you you ring someone, you you ignore your customers for however long, right? And, and then, then when you, you need suddenly to ring sell. them out. Yeah, exactly. That's mm-hmm. it. Whereas. You know, it's like I get some of my customers freak out because I'll just send them a link to something that I saw. And and they'll be like, yeah, I don't need any clothes right now. And I'm like, I know I wasn't I wasn't <laughs> sending you the link for that. I was literally I was thinking about you and I just exactly. wanted to see how you were doing. That was it. 
and you just pinpointed the biggest thing. People are so surprised by that. They instantly think you're about to ask a favor or ask for money or ask for a sale. It's yeah. not just that you're doing something out of the kindness of your heart. So that starts to stand out when you do it more habitually. So from this standpoint of getting referrals, if you're that person that shows up and does nothing with the content when it's over, Roberto, you're not going to refer that person to five other podcasts because then those five other podcasters are going to have the same experience. But and I, I don't showed... want I don't want my fellow podcasters having exactly. that experience. E- exactly right. Yeah, so it's now... like you can't, like how how was Jason Sacconi? You had him on the show recently, and I'm not setting you up for this, by the way, but because I know <laughs> that you're awesome. But but uh, yeah, you know, like ju- like the pre talk was great, and during the episode, he was absolutely awesome, and I I kind of felt like we had a good connection, and then I put all this work into promoting it, and he did nothing. So. I I'm not I know how busy you are. I'm not going to recommend that you have him as a guest because he's probably going to do the same thing. And I wouldn't want that for you. I mean, that's naturally what we do when we recommend people to people. We -hmm. generally don't recommend people that are going to give our friends, our contacts, our clients, whatever, a bad experience in any way, shape or form. So you you have to kind of uh, that has to come into consideration as well. Absolutely. In this space, again, when you start to build a good reputation. Like you, we could use pod matching as, a, as an example. There's a little section to where the, the host can review the guest and how they were. And that shows up in our profiles. And the more great experiences you have, the more opportunities you have to get this big stack of reviews. I think I'm up to maybe 30 some. I can't remember the exact number that I have all five stars because I'm bringing this demeanor to the microphone every time. Yeah. And again, not just trying to have a good interview, trying to create a good relationship that we can build on as we move forward. But there's so much that can open up when you start to bring value. And it's not just in the podcast space. That's in the professional world and the personal world. When you're a source of value, when you're of service, you're trying to help people, you're trying to get them from A to B. And you're not always asking for money in return. You're bringing genuine value into the world. Now, of course, we all have to keep the lights on. So there's going to be a point to where that's going to have to be a conversation that's had. But because you've taken all this time to give away all this value for free, people trust you now. You're eliminating all that cold sales call conversation where people need to fill you out because you're on a podcast telling your story and talking about the value that you can bring to them and that you bring to others. You cost yourself those opportunities if you're just trying to do it transactionally. And that's where it comes into, if I were to call you up saying, we never talked again. And then next year I call you up and say, Roberto, can you connect me with somebody? I need to do this. And and you'd be like, I don't even remember who this guy is. (laughs) Or, oh yeah, I remember you. We talked last year. Like it's so much harder to make that type of headway and get what you need. If you're not taking the time to cultivate a relationship over time and then be the resource in return for that person, because Maybe I connect with somebody and I say, you know, I was just on Roberto's podcast. He was great. I'm going to connect you with him. You need to go have a conversation with him. You guys will have a great time. So the road goes both ways, but you have to be rooted in value to make it work and make it worthwhile. Absolutely. You know what I love about the conversation that we've been having is that if someone just dropped in on the two of us, like if we were sat in the middle of a coffee shop having this conversation as two people who, who didn't know each other an hour ago, Mm -hmm. Um, and somebody just dropped in halfway, we could be talking about anything. We could be talking about building a business, podcasting, starting a YouTube channel, whatever. The principles are the same. Um, Branding, personal branding, company branding, whatever. All all those little threads that we're talking about, they run through all of those things, um, which which is what I absolutely love about this. Um, I... (sighs) I kind of I feel like I'm going to take this away back to back to us as hosts but I think I'm just so curious so I'm going to ask you the question and I hope everybody yep. at home well tough because I'm going to ask it you <laughs> you can skip or just you know unsubscribe uh, no please don't um wow this is going to be epic I'm really confident though <laughs> I guess like, so that, that I, this man, I better stick raise the level here <laughs> <laughs> but it's no but it's about right okay so um I think it was like my eighth episode, maybe, or maybe the fifth or sixth. But, you know, at that time, I was just starting this thing. And me, I don't start something that I'm not going to keep showing up to, right? Like, I've finished Mm -hmm. what I start. 
and mm. otherwise clothes would never get made. Um, <laughs> and now people are like, sorry, everybody but, be wearing shorts. <laughs> yeah. but, but you know, like you must have it as well, right? Like you get certain friends or clients or whatever, and they'll go, oh, you're still doing the podcast thing. What you thought it was like just a fad or something? Yeah, of course I am. In fact, I'm actually putting two episodes out a week, and I've just started a YouTube channel. Like, right. wow! And how, how the hell do you? Anyway, um, but but when I first started, I was really hung up on the numbers, right? Yeah. Like, I could keep hitting refresh on Buzzsprout, like hoping my downloads would go up every time I put an episode out. Yeah. And I remember someone that very early on, and a fellow podcaster, and and he said to me. we have to think about our intention and why we do this. And from his point of view, his philosophy was, if I put an episode out and it helps just one, one person hears that episode and I help them in some way, then it was worthwhile. Absolutely. And I think a lot of us tenured podcasters take that view. Yes. So, you know, me, I'm not I'm not so hung up on the numbers anymore, unless my wife, who's also my business partner, is saying, can we monetize yet? Can we monetize yet? Can we monetize yet? And I'm like, no, not yet. We're not we're not quite there yet. Um, yeah. But, you know, I don't look at the numbers on, on unless it's that conversation <laughs> just to see where we are. But but you're very adamant that the metrics are just, you know, vanity metrics. Can you can mm. you kind of ex- go into that a little bit and uh, explain for people yeah. listening that are hung up on this sort of thing? I'd love to. I, they are. They're vanity metrics because it doesn't necessarily... I mean, there, there's so many different directions you can go with this. I'll start here. A download does not equate to a listen. And what I mean by that is if you're subscribed to my podcast, every time I put a new show out, that's going to filter your to your device. And if you have your notifications on, it's going to tell you that I just released a new podcast. When it filters to anybody that's subscribed, I get credit for a download. That doesn't mean you listen to the show and listening is where the magic happens. And if, if I built, if I based everything around this download number, it's inflated to some degree and it really means nothing in the grand scheme of things, especially when you do it on a per episode basis. This is the biggest plague in the podcasting space. In my opinion, the fact that everybody gets fixated on those metrics, the second they start, the second they start putting content into the world, because I think to some degree we're preconditioned to believe it's all about the metrics and it's all about the statistics. Those statistics will come into play at some point in the whole experience, but not when you're first starting. If you're on your first podcast, more than likely you're not that good at it yet. And that's not a knock. That's just how we all are. We have to get better at our craft. And if you start fixating on a number versus the quality of content that you're putting out and being consistent, Roberta, you're into this for a couple of years. That's tremendous. And you've made it so much further than the average person, because most people will do seven to eight episodes. They'll keep looking at that number. It's not trending upward. And they will say, this doesn't work, or this is too much work for me for these results. And they'll abandon their show way before it ever got even close to being something that could be a major breakthrough for them. So I challenge all new podcasters to ignore the statistics tab on their podcast host for a minimum of six months. Don't even get in the habit of looking because if you're brand new to this, you're not going to be happy. Even if you have an established audience on another platform, they're not all podcast listeners. So just because you have a few thousand followers on Facebook or YouTube or whatever does not mean they're all going to come over and listen to your podcast. So don't expect this instant jump. So ignoring those metrics altogether will allow you to put your focus where it needs to be. And that's on getting better at having conversations, on creating compelling content to when audience members do show up and listen, they fall in love with it and they get invested in what you're doing. That's where the magic happens, and that's where you'll start to experience real growth. The common argument that many podcasters will throw out there, man, I've only got like 50 people downloading each episode. And I only say, okay, cool, 50 people. If they all showed up in your living room, would you give them a crappy experience, and would you be pissed off that they showed up? Or would you give them the party of a a lifetime and be thankful that they're there 
and find out more about what's keeping them there. What do you like about what I'm doing? What can I do better? Really drill into those people because what you want to happen, instead of looking past those 50 out your door, wondering where the hundreds and thousands are, hundreds of thousands are, you want those 50 to each turn around to one person in their circle and say, you need to listen to Roberto's podcast. I just found this show. I've been binging the hell out of it. There's so much good content here. You're going to love it. If every one of those person, every one of those people does that one time, now you have 100 listeners. Let's say now they turn around to another person, and then those new people turn around to one person. So this is the math lesson for the day. It's called exponential growth, kids. This is how you experience real growth, but you can't get there until you put quality content in front of them consistently. And that's where people get hung up and that metric of downloads will scare them and make them think this is not worth it and nothing's going to happen and it will throw you off completely. And then I'll flip this real quick on the guest side. Same thing. Many people think I've got to be on this show with thousands and thousands of listeners. No. In many cases, those thousands and thousands of listeners show up because they love the host. Joe Rogan Experience. Great show. Obviously, he has very engaging conversations and great guests, but I guarantee you, for the most part, most of those listeners show up because they like Joe Rogan. They know he's going to deliver them a quality product, no matter who he has on the guest mic. It works that way in even the smaller shows. So you can't get fixated on saying, I'm going to go on a podcast that has 50,000 downloads, and if I don't get there, I'm not going to accomplish anything. That's BS. Yeah. You need to find shows that align with your message and with your objectives. That audience could have 50 people in it, but maybe half of that audience is captivated by what you have to say, and they look you up, and now they're on your email list. Now you're in a position to provide them more value, but if you would have disqualified that show because they quote-unquote don't have enough downloads, that's an opportunity squandered, and it's focusing on the wrong thing. And you never know what you can accomplish. And think about it, if you're a solopreneur or small business, how many people can you honestly take on and give them the attention they deserve at once? So the massive audience <laughs> d- dynamic really is irrelevant in that case because you yeah. can only really fully service somebody and give them the attention they deserve on a smaller scale. Now, if you get more than that and you need to start growing and looking at ways to scale up, that's a good problem to have. But those people exist in the smaller audiences as well. So to put a bow on it, download metrics are flawed. And they can serve a purpose, but you have to understand when and where. And it's not when you're choosing a show to be a guest on. And it's certainly not when you're creating a new podcast from scratch. Absolutely. I remember kind of like about six months in and I was getting, I'd get, I have a certain friend who may or may not listen to this. And if he is, I love you very much. Um, You know, uh, but one question that he would always ask every time we got together, how's the podcast going? Are you still doing it? Yeah, I am. You know, I'm still doing it because I see you commenting when I post on Instagram or whatever. How many downloads are you getting? Who cares? Yeah. No, but how many want... downloads are you getting? And I'm like, well, I don't know the exact number, but I'm getting roughly the equivalent to a classroom full of people every single week to talk to. And if a classroom full of people to talk to is an educate and give value to is good enough for teachers, then it's good enough for me. That's a great way to look at it. Yeah. I mean, I'll add to that. I had when I first launched Evolution of Brand, I was probably five weeks in. I hadn't even come close to looking at my metrics. Honestly, I don't think I would have unless because I had to jump service providers recently. That was when I looked. But. At that point, I wasn't even thinking about it. At that point, it was all about just putting the content out. And and I was still, I was heavily interviewing and batching content. And gentlemen that joined me said, oh, how old is your podcast? And I was like, well, I just released episode like eight or nine. I can't remember the exact number. He's like, oh, cool. How many downloads do you have? I was like, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I was like, I, I didn't look at that metric. That means nothing to me. He was blown away. He couldn't believe that I hadn't looked. And I told him, I was like, that's not what I'm creating this content for. And on top of that, I'm still new. I mean, the show has been live for five weeks. There's nothing in those numbers that's going to tell me anything I need to know right now. So, I mean, if listen, if that's why you reached out, I mean, if that's a factor for you, 
we don't have to do this because you reached out to me wanting to be on the show. Yeah. And he was like, Oh no, no, we're cool. We're cool. He's like, I just can't believe you didn't look. And there, and that, and there you go. I mean, again, it's a mindset thing. And I think it's that preconditioning to believe it's all about statistics. It's all about likes and retweets and the numbers that are in front of us. And at the end of the day, the reality of what we're creating here, it couldn't be further from that. Absolutely. The other thing I, I just want to, I'm conscious of time for you. I've held on to you longer than I should have done. And I'm so sorry. Um, but um, from a guest point of view and from a host point of view. So let's take you and I as an example right now. We've just been recording for an hour. Mm -hmm. And that's audio. And we've established that not everybody listens to podcasts. Not right. everybody takes content in. Do you call it orally when it's through your ear? Audibly, Always, I believe. Audibly. Oral, yeah. <laughs> orally. Orally, orally spoken. Through, spoken. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, I think orally, A-U-R-A-L, is through the ear. Any of my doctor listeners, let me know. Uh, email Could the be. show. We'll go um, with it just for conversation's so. sake. Yeah, anyway. Through, so some people take content in through their ears. Some people take it in through their eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So some and some so some people like to watch and some people like to read. Mm -hmm. So 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 you take this one hour episode and you and I then have the option because what we're doing it for is to serve people and give people value. So knowing that people take content in different ways, what stops us as a guest or as a host? from just leaving it as it goes out onto iTunes and Spotify and wherever and just leaving it there, mm. we almost have a responsibility because you gave so many amazing teaching points. I have a responsibility to my audience that aren't just subscribers to my podcast, maybe my followers on LinkedIn that actually engage with the articles that I put out there. Yeah, Maybe it's my Facebook crowd. Maybe it's the people that love my Instagram reels. Maybe it's the YouTube channel, the 35 subscribers we've got. We've only been going for like a week. Um, but who cares about the numbers? No, they're right, just yeah. metrics, Don't worry right? about it. Who cares? Yep. Um, and so repurposing that content, breaking it up, putting it into those different formats and then putting it onto those different platforms is how you can amplify the messaging that you're giving when you're a guest on a podcast or you're the host of a podcast mm -hmm. right yeah i mean what we're doing it gives you the opportunity to have so much in regards to content and even to a point to where it might not be something you normally do but it's there i mean yeah. let's start we've obviously got the audio component so we're going to satiate anybody that's a podcast listener and listening on Spotify, Amazon, Apple iTunes or Apple Podcasts, whatever. But we've also got also got this video component from our recording. And this is something if you want to try to give a silver lining to COVID, I think it normalized this environment for so much mm. podcasting included. But I think networking as a whole became much more normalized in this environment doing business in this environment. Again, I mean, I was doing this before COVID, but still, I think a lot of thought was having those interviews in person was the way to go. But in that mindset, you're really limiting your reach because you can only communicate with a certain amount of people, or if you're traveling, then you could connect with somebody. But now we have global reach. In any other circumstance other than that, you and I would have never been able to do this, but here we are. Yep. So now we have this video component that comes with the audio. You can use that in so many different ways. Clip it up for reels and shorts and in TikTok videos. You can do longer form content for YouTube and Vimeo. You can use a whole segment and put it on your Facebook page. We could reconnect again and rehash this on a live video. There's so much built into the video component, and it's just another way to reach new people. So even if they don't listen to your podcast, you're still making an impact. What about the transcription? You can take the words and transcribe it. And now you could have blog posts and social media posts. So that's a big part of it. You could literally, if you wanted to, break this down and maybe develop a webinar on podcasting. Take this content as your bones and then build a webinar around it. The amount of masters, the podcasting, uh, what I call the podcasting process, the podcasting experience, the amount of masters it serves is a beautiful thing. And you want to talk about working smarter, not harder. 
This is a tremendous way to do it. And this is where, from the guest side, you could get this from the host. If you if they are willing to share the raw content, now you can clip your own little snippets and use it in your own marketing strategies. There's a ton to be gained with this. A friend of mine named Dustin Reekman says there's a lot of meat on that bone. And he, him and I have very, we're singing from the same songbook when oh, it comes to me podcast too, you guesting. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a tomahawk the other day. That is such a visceral analogy for me. You know, it's yeah. like me and my wife, uh, you know, it's like we get to kind of like the end of the steak and then the bone's sitting there on the plate and there's still a lot of meat on it. <laughs> and then we're both looking at each other and it's like, you it know, who's going to get it man. first? Yeah, yeah, because there's no, still yeah. meat on that bone that we can pick off and pick off we will. And yes, you're absolutely indeed. right. It's exactly the same with content like this. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. I'm so I, sorry I interrupted you, but you brought No, you're a, fine. You no, meet, that's not... You, you said meat and bone. <laughs> I, I stimulated <laughs> those primal urges, didn't I? No, that I, but that was pretty much it. There's so much meat on the bone, and you don't want to leave it hanging. You don't want to discard that. You want to use it to the max, because it's going to give you multiple opportunities to impact different audiences and get them into your world. Exactly. Suck the marrow out of that puppy. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. My 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 dog's right behind me on the bed. Oh, no worries. She, she doesn't understand English. It's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jason, thank you so so much. I'm so sorry. I kept you longer than, no, than uh, was man, originally was fun, advertised. Man. But have you had fun? I did. I had a blast. I have absolutely no qualms at all spending a little extra time with you, my friend. This is a good time. I want to do this again. I'll, I'm in. Let's do it. Awesome. I'm so glad. So everybody who's listening, um, if you want to check out Jason's uh, podcast, connect with him, go to, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jason, www.enhanceyourauthority.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and there you'll be able to get a free copy of the Absolute Guide to Authority, uh, authority Enhancement as well as access to weekly podcast guesting training and strategy videos, which are available only to Jason's email community. That is 100% correct. And when you land on that page and pick up that guide, you'll be on my website. So please feel free to grab a cold beverage from the fridge and remove your shoes and wander around and see what you find. You may discover something that really piques your interest and you'll have many opportunities to set up a free discovery session with me so we can rap about all this great stuff and get you pointed in the right direction exactly no that's that's awesome and i'm i will obviously be connecting with jason everywhere that i can find him straight after this recording (laughs) so i will make sure i have all of his other links in the show notes for you as well Um, thank you so much for joining Jason and I today hit the share button to send this podcast on to someone you know who could benefit from the things we discussed on this episode you can find Tailoring Talk on Instagram at Tailoring Talk Podcast for updates on new episodes and I love your feedback so continue to email me at tailoringtalkpodcast at gmail.com if you want to support the show further you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Roberto Rivilla Have a great week, be good to each other, and I'll see you tailoring talkers on the next one.